Hi everyone. While it has been a fantastic semester navigating Calculus 3 with you, I am so excited to tell you this is the last video of Calc 3. Woo! And we're going to end with a bang. This last video covers the divergence theorem. So we are going to return to calculating flux using surface integrals. So let's just jump right in. Recall that given some vector field f that is a function of x, y, z for all three components, the divergence of f is the partial of f with respect to x, add the partial of g with respect to y, add the partial of h with respect to z. And if you remember, divergence relates to the flow of a fluid. Okay, so here's what that divergence theorem says. Let E be a solid, so a closed solid, and let S be the boundary surface of E given with positive, which means outward orientation. Then, this symbol, if you remember, is flux. The first way we calculated flux, or really the only way, is surface integral of f dot ds. What the divergence theorem tells us is that if E is a uh, closed solid, and if the boundary surface has a positive orientation, then to calculate flux, we can do the triple integral over that region E of divergence of f dv. So as you can see in my little note here, it's kind of like using the potential function to calculate work. And remember, that's only if you have a conservative vector field. It's going to save us some time. Now, you might be wondering, well, why is that? What does the proof look like? And I'm sorry to disappoint you, we are not going to do the proof together. There is a proof, though, in your book. So let's just jump right in and uh, do example number one. Find the flux of the vector field f over the unit sphere x squared at y squared equals 1. So one thing that I'm going to tell you is we are going to assume that there is pos positive outward orientation. WebAssign is not going to explicitly state that. So that's what we're going to have to assume. So can we use the divergence theorem? Well, we have this unit sphere, which is certainly closed. Uh, the sphere around it is the boundary surface. We're assuming positive outward orientation. So yes we can use divergence theorem. So we are going to start by finding the divergence of f. So we're going to take the deriv partial derivatives of each of these with respect to x, y, and z. So as you can see, we're going to get 0, add 1, add 0. So our divergence is just 1. So our flux then, again, which is the surface integral of f dot ds, by the divergence theorem, we can write it as the triple integral over the region E of 1 dot dv. Okay, so let's talk about what is our uh, solid and what is our boundary. So E is the unit sphere, which is that x squared add y squared add z squared equals 1. And then S is the boundary of that sphere. So this is actually less than or equal to. E is the entire sphere, including the part that's on the inside. S is just the boundary, so just equal to 1. Okay, so let's be smart here. If we're going to calculate this triple integral, we have two different options. Option number one, if we're just a computer and jumping in without really thinking, we can set up the bounds using spherical coordinates. Or, if we think for a minute before jumping right in, triple integral of 1 dv, we've seen before. What does that represent? Anyone? Volume. So, conveniently, our surface is a sphere, so instead we can just find the volume of a sphere. So, of course, I'm going to do that because it's more efficient rather than setting up bounds. Hopefully you remember volume of, of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. In our case, unit sphere has a radius of 1. So we get a volume of 4 thirds pi, which means that the flux in this case is just 4 thirds pi. So let's take a look at a few more examples. Two, find the outward flux of the vector field f across s, which is the tetrahedron bounded by 2x, add 2y, add z, in the first, 
at z equals 6 in the first octant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing myself a figure. So I'm going to draw our region. This is a plane in the first octant, so our z-intercept is 6, our x-intercept is 3, and our y-intercept is 3. So we are looking at this closed solid. So remember, we're looking at the entire solid. So what we would have done previously, calculating flux, is we would have done a surface integral. Now, here is the issue. There's four different surfaces. There's the bottom of that tetrahedron, and then there's all three sides. So we would have to do the first surface of f dot ds. Then we would have to do the second surface of f dot ds and so on and so forth for all four surfaces. Now, we're going to ask ourselves, do we want to do four surface integrals? Of course not. So at this point, I'm thinking to myself, can I use the divergence theorem? Well, we definitely have a, a closed solid, and we also are told that we have outward orientation. Now, as a reminder, you're not going to be told that. So your homework is not going to say uh, outward orientation. I will tell you outward orientation, but you're not going to see that in the homework. So can we use the divergence theorem? Yes. So let's start with finding the divergence of f. So remember, we're going to take the partials with respect to x, y, and z. So that gives us 1 add 2y add 1, or 2 add 2y. OK, so now our flux, we're setting up a triple integral. I'm going to give myself some room to find those bounds, and it's going to be 2 add 2y. I'm going to integrate with respect to z, and then y, and then x. z is going to go from 0 to our plane, which is 6 minus 2x minus 2y. And then for these two outer bounds, what we're looking at is this region in the xy plane. So this line right here is the line y equals 3 minus x. So y will go from 0 to 3 minus x. And x will go from 0 to 3. And this is what we're going to calculate. Now, we haven't done a triple integral, or we haven't really integrated a lot in the previous videos. So we are going to integrate this one. What I would suggest you do if you're up for the challenge is pause the video and see if you can work through this triple integral and come back when you are ready. Okay, hopefully it means that you are ready right now. We have 0 to 3, 0 to 3 minus x. If we integrate with respect to z, I'm going to have 2 multiplied by 6 minus 2x subtract 2y, add 2y multiplied by 6 subtract 2x subtract 2y, dy dx. So then if I do a little simplifying, that's going to give me negative 4y squared, subtract 4xy, subtract 4x, add 8y, add 12, dy dx. So now if I integrate with respect to y, I'm going to get negative 4 thirds y to the third, subtract 2xy squared, subtract 4xy, add 4y squared, add 12y, evaluated from y equals 0 to y equals 3, subtract x. Okay, so that then will give me the integral from 0 to 3 of negative 4 thirds, 3 subtract x to the third, subtract 2x times 3 minus x squared, subtract 4x times 3 minus x, Add 4 times 3 minus x squared. Add 12 multiplied by 3 minus x dx. And I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that this is where I stopped. And I got 31.5. So hopefully we can see that while the integration wasn't the kindest, that it was would be much nicer to do a triple integral than to do four surface integrals. We have one more example that we're going to do, and then we have one more topic to talk about, and then we will be done. 
Okay, example number three, evaluate this surface integral, which calculates flux, where F is that uh, vector field and S is the surface of the region E bounded by Z equals one subtract X squared, Z is equal to zero, Y is equal to zero, and Y add Z equals two. Okay, so not using the divergence theorem, we would have had to do four surface integrals. Now, because we have a closed figure, we can do divergence theorem using a triple integral instead of those four separate surface integrals. So moving forward to find the divergence of F, taking all of our partial derivatives, we're gonna get Y add two Y, which is just plain old three Y. So our flux then, which is the surface integral of F dot DS, is going to be the triple integral of 3y, and then I'm going to integrate with respect to y first, and then z, and then x. y is going to go from 0 to this plane right here, which is 2 subtract z. z then is going to go from 0 to this kind of parabola right here, which is 1 subtract x squared, and x will go from negative 1 to 1. Now, it is much easier to come up with these bounds when you have a figure. As I've talked about before, you're not always going to have a figure. So if you don't have one, it would be a good idea to draw one. We're not going to do this integration. If you are interested and want to do it on your own, I'm going to tell you the answer is 184 out of 35. Last topic of this video is what we call sources and sinks. And right off the bat, I'm going to tell you there's no integrals. So that's pretty nice. A source, or sources in general, are any points where fluid enters the flow. Sinks are, on the other hand, are any points where fluid leaves the flow. The way you identify sources in sinks if the divergence of F at a certain point is greater than zero, you have a source at that point. If the divergence of F at some point is less than zero, you have a sink at that point. So we're gonna end with two quick examples. Example four, determine if this vector field is free of sources and sinks, if not, locate them. So we're gonna have to start by finding the divergence of F so we're going to take the partials with respect to x, y, and z. So our divergence of f is just plain old 0. So never going to be greater than 0, never going to be less than 0. So what that tells us is that there are no sources and no sinks. OK, example 5, this time I'm telling you there are sources and sinks, and I want to know where they are for this given vector field F. So we are gonna start by finding the divergence of F. Partials again with respect to X, Y, and Z. So that's gonna be Y subtract X. So sources, like we said above, are gonna happen when that divergence is greater than zero. Sinks are gonna happen when that divergence is less than zero. So there are sources at all points where x is less than y, and there are sinks at all points where x is greater than y. And that's it. That is the last topic of conversation for us in Calculus 3. If you've been with me since the beginning, thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, for my students, I will see you in class. If you are moving on to differential equations after this, I will have a set of videos up for those eventually, so just keep an eye out.